Hey guys, Xander here at the Fusion Cam Team, and today we're going to be looking at how to set up the Pocket NC inside of Fusion 360. So first off, we're going to navigate into the Cam Samples, Machine Tables, Pocket NC, Pocket NC, where I have made an assembly for you guys. Now, once you have this assembly loaded, you're just going to go ahead and do File, Save As, and save this into your local project directory. So in my case, it's going to be Forum Posts, because I'm helping someone out on the forums, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and save it as Pocket NC hop over into that folder and I have a part in here that I want to machine. So first off, what we need to do is we need to say what type of stock we have. Now, honestly, you can do this in any order. You can put the stock inside of the circuit housing folder. You can put it inside of this. You can make a whole another file for it. But to be simple, the most easy way in my opinion is just to throw a stock body into here if you're just doing a one off real fast. And so to do that, we're going to create a new component. We'll call this our stock component because it's our component that's going to hold our stock. I'm just going to right click, isolate so it doesn't have the whole cluttered view from the other components. Create a new sketch on this plane. Yes, it's plane. And we're going to do a center rectangle size 1 by 2 by 2. All right, there's our stock body. I'm going to go ahead and activate the whole assembly again and unisolate this. So now what we need to do is we need to position this. So just using a quick few commands here, we'll just go ahead and align components. I've got another video. If you click somewhere in the center right now, you can see my video on whatever I titled it. So we're just gonna hide, not hide, we're gonna click that face and this face. And that is going to move them to where the two faces are touching. Hit okay. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly eyeball this position on this pin with the move command. Again, moving components. Go ahead and select the stock component. And with some fancy eyeballing skills. Close enough, yeah. And then we'll just go ahead and drag this front one out also to a quote unquote close enough area. And once we have everything into a semi-decent position, we'll just go ahead and capture that position. We'll go ahead and change this to something like 30% opacity, so that way it doesn't clutter and block our view when we go ahead and throw our circuit machine in. And we'll save that for now. And so now we have a basic setup with our stock in it. Now we're going to start adding our component. And we're just going to drag and drop. And once that's loaded in, we're going to once again roughly position it. If you got a setup you need to have done properly, you can do a little bit more of a, of a fine tuning, I guess, process. But for me, I just get it close enough. I looks good over there. Might need to move it in a little bit, center it a little bit. But that looks about good. And so now that we have it in place roughly, I'm just going to go ahead and capture that position, I thought it. Oh, because we already we just added it so we don't need to capture the position. Okay, we're good. So, now I'm just going to go ahead and right click break this link. Not necessary, but for me, I like being able to have the option to export as an F3D file. And as long as it has no links inside, you can still export it. But as soon as you have a link in it, you have to use A360 and download using a F3Z file format. So to keep things simple, I'm just breaking the link. And uh, for these one-off parts, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, moving on. Now that we have our quote-unquote assembly finished and everything is in position, we can just go ahead and cop. Uh, we can just go ahead and hop over into the cam environment and create our first setup. Now we're going to go ahead and clear out our bodies. And working top to bottom, our orientation is going to be select Z axis and plane. And for our Z axis, I like choosing this face on the vise right here. And then I choose this face for my X axis. And then I made this super easy for you guys for the origin. Just select model origin. That's going to default to a place that is 0.885 inches above the, above the table at the center of rotation, I believe. And that is what it's going to be for most pocket NCs unless you've done your own custom tool offset or uh, work offset um, 
I'll put some like details about that in the description. They have a whole write-up on how to do that. For our model, we're going to click and hold in order to get that second body behind there. And then for our stock, from solid, and we're going to choose the solid we made earlier. Post-process, you can leave alone unless you want to like, change this to be... Um, and then demo YouTube part. So that's just... That's just going to get auto-filled into the post-process dialog later on. So everything looks good. You don't need to add fixture components, but you can. Um, I usually don't. And then from there, you can just go over to the model environment and you can actually make this unselectable if you want to be able to still see it, but have it not get in the way. So for example, if I'm trying to select geometry, I For example, that didn't work. Oh, my bad. Made the wrong thing unselectable. Make the stock unselectable. And now, and now, and now, guys. And now, when you try and select that, it doesn't select the it doesn't select the stock. But you can still kind of get a rough idea for where your toolpath will lay in regards to where the model's at without having to actually select the whole setup. So for example, if I create an adaptive clearing operation and I choose a my eighth inch tool right here. Yep, looks good. Set my bottom height to something like selection there. So we can get a rough idea for where that toolpath is actually gonna lie. Now, you will notice that this toolpath is going to be intersecting the vise and machining the vise. So something I like to do to just avoid that real quickly is I will once again, well first make this selectable, go into my stock, or my part, but usually my stock, make it isolated again, and I'll just quickly add in kind of like a boundary condition. So I will just quickly add in like some sketch, maybe something like, maybe something like that. It's not rocket science, it just needs to be rough. And then we can make it unisolated. Hop back into, make this active. Hop back into cam. And so now instead of having this, we can just go ahead and edit. We can choose a selection. We can choose that sketch. Tool center on boundary. And we can say, actually it looks pretty good. We'll see how that goes. Just hit okay, do it. See what it looks like. Just try things. So I don't quite like that. It looks like it's getting stuck inside. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly edit it. it. Looks like maybe tool outside boundary was what I needed to do. But what I might need to do is make that sketch a little larger. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to avoid hitting the vise. we we'll just quickly simulate this. Go over here. So we can see that there's not going to be any type of collision right there. You know, Just check right there that we're not hitting the vise you know, right there. We're, we're cutting it close. You're going to get a little pucker, but clearance is clearance, right? So that's the motto. So, you know, maybe maybe I would modify this sketch edge to be a little further in, but it's all just fine-tuning. Now, to do any type of 5-axis work, or what I would call 3 plus 2, all you need to do really is just under your tool orientation here, enable tool orientation, and then select a different X and Z and then it's going to automatically take care of it. Now, you do need to keep in mind that the pocket NC can only go to certain angles. So if I try having something like this where my Y is inverted and facing down, uh, in order for the pocket NC to technically hit that, it would have to rotate 180 degrees. And that's not physically possible for the machine. That can only go minus 5 and 100 or 95. So you do need to keep in mind how far the machine can go and that can be a little tricky when you're designing parts too is trying to keep in mind what the machine can actually do physically but once you start running into the issues you'll start learning what you can't do now with anything 3 plus 2 related it's pretty easy to just keep this y-axis up or somewhere in the positive direction and then it'll work for most cases and then what we'll do is we'll just quickly make some type of geometry for this so I have something to show 
I didn't make that unselectable again, but we can just hide it and hit OK. So once again, we'd be hitting the vice here, so I might want to do some type of... What is it considered? can't think about stock contours? Machining boundary? Machining boundary. I'd want to do some type of machining boundary for that toolpath. But anyways, without getting too into that, I'm just going to go ahead and generate the toolpath. No, I'm not generate. Post-process the toolpath. Man, it's early. Post-process the toolpath. And uh, if you have something else selected besides like pocket NC, I just hit P. And it's actually the first one that pops up, so it's super handy. And our program number and comment gets copied from our setup that we did. Now, one thing that you might want to do is changing this maximum A axis change. By default, this is 20. And if it goes over 20 degrees when you're trying to do an A axis change, which is along the X axis, so uh, ABC is XYZ, so anything that's along the A axis is along this X axis. So the machine can do 100 degrees, like I said, minus 5 plus 95 degrees of A axis rotation. So I like to just set the maximum A axis change to be 90 degrees. That way you can start, that way you can go from, you can go from this default orientation here to an orientation like this, where you're machining from the top area, and that's going to be a 90 degree rotation. So back to post process, maximum change 90 degrees. Beyond that, everything else is pretty standard. Uh, TCP, nothing else you're going to change basically. N not going to change the thing. The only thing you might want to change is uh, the show numbers, the show sequence numbers, and this can actually reduce your file size a little bit too because it's not constantly writing all those uh, block numbers. So we just go ahead and post process this to one, two, three, four, five. Now that we have the posted code, you're probably wondering, well you're not probably wondering, but you're going to be wondering, well how do I know that this is the right code, how do I know that this is going to work correctly? Well I have just the thing for you guys. So we can just copy paste or open a file, but I have a website now called ncviewer, ncviewer.com, that lets you backplot and view all your G-code. So we'll just go ahead and clear this out and create a new file, and we'll just paste that file into here real fast and hit plot and we can see what our code's doing. So we can see, I have this in the horizontal machine because the pocket and C is of course a horizontal machine. And we can see that it's going to be machining out that front adaptive area. Let me hide the rapid moves right now. It's gonna be machining out that rapid area in the front and then coming over on the left side and doing that adaptive on the left side as well. And if I just go ahead and select on any tool number, or sorry, if I just go ahead and click on any line number, I can actually get a quick tool representation in the view of what it's doing. Uh, this is still a work in progress. It's what I consider a public beta, where I am letting everyone use it for free right now. And I'm just trying to get feedback as far as what needs to be changed, what's broken, what doesn't work, and what features people would like. So if you guys have anything, just shoot me a message, send me a comment, follow me on Instagram and send me something, doesn't matter. But hopefully this will help you guys. I've actually made this specifically for the Pocket NC because that's what I can verify against very easily and well. But if you guys have a different machine or if you have some other way you can verify 5-axis toolpaths with this, uh, definitely let me know if there's any issues. The one I know AB axes rotations work really well. I don't know about C axis. And no one has told me anything otherwise, so I would think it's good. But I'm not the best at math all the time. But anyways, this should work for you guys. There's a quick example program if you just want to see how this works. Uh, if you just click the example button. Horizontal lathe machines. So if you're using a lathe, this will uh, do a top-down view so you can see the grid. Also hide the grid if it's in your way. I've tested this all the way up to files that are 10 megabytes in size, so I haven't had any issues with file size yet. But if you guys have any limitations or issues or anything, just tell me. But beyond that, hopefully this will help you guys out as well. That's ncviewer.com. I'll put the link in the description too. But yeah, definitely let me know if you guys have any other questions as far as the setup goes when it comes to the Pocket NC. Um, I'm sure I'll be having more videos about this because I've been seeing more and more questions, but this will be at least a quick start for you guys to get in there and start machining. Alright, hope you guys have fun. See ya.